Managers of Reddit, what is a Karen experience like? What was your worst experience? I loved Karens when I was managing. Being able to say I am the manager followed soon by sorry, that's company policy always results in a flustered Karen leaving in a huff and a much relieved crew. Yep, then I would get well give me your boss's cell number, absolutely not. There's no way in heck I'm giving out his number. You can come in tomorrow when he's here or call us. Happened before I became a manager, but once while I was serving at Steak and Shake, customer had a coupon for a burger, fries and a shake for dollar sign XXX. Can't remember the price anymore. Anyway, on the coupon it specifically stated that cheese on the burger was $0.39 up charge, although it did have a picture of a burger with cheese on it. Lady threw a fit in the dining room that I was treating her unfairly, it was false advertising, etc, etc. I told her I agree it's false advertising with the picture, but the text specifically states the upcharge and unfortunately I can't do anything about it. The lady at the next table overheard everything and literally got up and put $0.50 on the table to cover it and said something to the effect of I'll pay for your dang cheese if you just shut up. This pee the cheese lady off even more. My manager obviously sensed the issue and came out. Took the cheese up charge of the bill. Like WTF Karen. Love how that other lady, I think I'll call her Laren, is like the anti Karen. She probably has daughters. Work at a vacuum repair shop. People don't pay attention to their vacuum cleaners as much as you'd think lol. I can tell you how many times someone comes to pick up their vacuum and says oh this one isn't mine or mine didn't have scratches down the side. I can tell you it is. And it came in with all those scratches on the side. After the first two times it happened to me we started taking pictures of the unit with serial numbers and customer info. Send them home with the serial number and require them to bring it back for pickup. Despite the evidence, I've had a lady close to tears because we didn't have her vacuum. Even with the pictures we had of it to drop off, her information, the matching serial numbers. Sure it's a big conspiracy we just love taking in vacuums and switching all the information around because it's fun. People need to pay more attention. I was the only person on shift, which made me the de facto manager. Five minutes before closing. A woman comes in and is so angry that we don't have any decaf. She demands to speak to the manager. I tell her that's me because I'm the only one here. And the coffee pots are clean for the night because it's 5 minutes to close. No. I'm sorry. I can't make another pot just for her. There's another place around the corner. She screams at me. Tells me she's going to find a real manager and get my ass butt fired. Throws half a cup of Capix in a machine sludge at me, and starts to look like she's gonna jump the counter. I'm holding a hammer under the counter thinking don't do it, don't do it. I pick up the phone like I'm going to call the cops. She leaves. I lock the door. She comes back and runs faster first into the glass door, like a bird. I'm not in retail anymore, but I was managing a popular mid-range handbag store. Think typical Karen bag, about $200-400. Anyway, most customers were fantastic. This one woman was this Shrek looking large red headed lady who stomped in and demanded that we repair her 20 year old bag for free. And if we couldn't do that, she demanded that we exchange this old ratty smelly 20 year old bag for a brand new one for her. Recently policy changes had resulted in new prices for this service, but free repairs had about a 1 year warranty on a new bag. Not a 20 year old one. I tell her as such. I was pretty young to have had the role I did so she, dissatisfied with my answer, asked to speak to a manager. I told her I'm the manager and she began turning as red as her hair. She screamed and yelled about how she'll call corporate and never shop here again. Well, that sounds like a real loss. Losing a customer that is too cheap to repair a 20 year old bag and hasn't bought new from us in just as long. I give her my best crap eating grin and say I am so sorry, that's just the policy, she demands corporate's number, I give her the customer service line that you can find on google, unbeknownst to her, she huffs away, forgetting her keys on the counter, she's halfway out and she remembers, turns around, red as a beat, huffs in my smiling face and snatches the keys off the counter, it was hilarious. She came back months later, worked with a different person on the team, and didn't even look my way. Wasn't the manager but worked at an REI for a while. 
One incident comes to mind though, involving an ex-marine who worked at our store fixing bikes. He had to run to the back to grab a part and as he was going back to the bike shop on the other side of the store a customer who was already being pretty loud and aggressive with everyone decided to grab my co-worker by the arm very aggressively and try spin him around to face him. Marine training kicked in and the next thing I know angry customer man is laying in the remains of a display about 8 feet away. Of course he jumps up screaming and yelling that he's going to sue us and get my co-worker fired. And we're all going to jail yada yada yada. Manager comes out, heard the story, looks at the security footage, and tells the customer he is never allowed to grab employees like that. He's welcome to call the cops if he would like because she's willing to press charges against him for assault. And he was banned from our store. No one at the store was upset about losing that customer. He was kind of notorious for being a jerk and constantly trying to abuse our return policy. As a long time REI member, I am so happy that this wasn't a story that made me want to stop going there. Not a manager, but I used to work in a call center and had plenty of Karens who wanted to talk to someone above me because they thought the world existed to cater to them. I always went back into their accounts to review the notes to see what was done. 9 out of 10 times they were given whatever they wanted even if it wasn't justified. Which is so freaking stupid. Enabling these people's behavior is what's got them feeling so entitled in the first place. I once told a woman if she didn't pay for her services, after 60 days they'd be interrupted. She responded with excuse me I'm a valued customer and that is not how I will be treated, or something to that effect. Freaking ridiculous. At some point you need to do a customer evaluation. Banks for example will just hike up fees and reduce services if they want you to quit them. I love the ones who seem to think extra food is free. You're not going to go anywhere and get extra meat quizo guacamole etc for free. I had a couple come in got a salad. They asked for extra meat. Then quizo then even more quizo. I told them they would be charged for each scoop. She flipped out, she started cussing at me about how it's wrong she shouldn't have to pay for more than one. Why must we be so expensive the other location does not do this. I gave her a big smile and let her know I am the general manager of that said store and help here when needed. So no you do not get that treatment there sorry extra food is not free. She then started screaming for corporate number and the store owner. I told her I couldn't give out people's private numbers and told her to leave and she is now banned from both stores. She did put in a compliant and guess who sees M and makes return calls? Me. She hung up on me when I called. I love when someone is unhappy with their meal and you fire something else for them, but they want the first meal to go and put in a box. No no, sorry, doesn't work that way. I was working at a public pool in my town, and the rules are that you can't bring outside food or drinks into the pool. This rule didn't please Karen who was very eager to let me know that she had just spent $12 on this coffee from Starbucks, but she argues with me by saying that the public pool in the next town over allows it. I keep saying the same rehearsed response, that it's our policy that outside food and drinks can't come in the pool. Anyway she dumped the coffee onto our computer and I called the police. I think the one standout I remember was a few years ago when my company, cell phone provider, gave everyone unlimited data for like 3 months for no charge. It was essentially a stress test on our network, but everyone was getting free data so it wasn't like anyone could complain. Or so I thought, I talked to one lady who had demanded a manager because unlimited phone data wasn't enough. They wanted unlimited data on their hotspot as well. She then threatened to get us all fired because we wouldn't give her unlimited data through her hotspot, which was actually a feature we didn't even offer paying customers at the time. She ranted and raved for a while and we ended up passing her between like 5 levels of supervisors before she gave up. That's a perfect Archu Singbuggers post waiting to happen. Exactly the thing that sub was designed for. I worked at a grocery store in high school, and last summer I came back as my summer job. We did this 10 for $10 deal wherein we'd have a bunch of crap on sale for a buck a piece, and then the 11th was free. We were open 24 hours, but all of our sales kicked in at 6am, and we weren't allowed to change it early in the register, as it's clearly stated in the first page of the flyer and in the app. This is important. I'd sometimes work third shift if they needed someone to fill in. Had this morbidly obese woman come in with literally a cart full of tuna at 4am, 
Easily 300-400 of them, as she had just taken the stand-up display boxes off the shelf. Of course, none of them ring up as on sale, and she starts screaming at the girl in front. The girl is explaining that this is how our policy works, and she's yelling about false advertising in our app and how she deserves the price change. I go up and try to placate her, as I've been here long enough, and she starts fuming about how the app is lying because it says this date and it's already midnight. I zoom in on the bit where it says her prices are only good at 6am and she goes purple. Are you really arguing with a customer right now? I tell her I am not, just pointing out what the ad says and she insists on seeing the manager. He tells her the same thing the two of us had, and she screamed about not knowing why she even bothered to shop here, and stormed off. I didn't go back to that job this summer. This sounds like a Midwestern grocery store chain near me with a red logo, blue carts and a dumb app. One time a Karen tried to return an expensive handbag that had obviously been used. She proceeded to say I was calling her a liar and her anger escalated as she paced back and forth at the till point. The Karen then proceeded to tell me that she was going to call in some guys to come after me after I finish work. Throughout this I am politely repeating my request that Karen leave but in hindsight I think this must have been rather annoying. As Karen proceeded to grab the bag and launch herself over the till at me in an attempt to hit me with it. At this point in time, a colleague who was yet to start their shift, therefore appeared as a customer, was on the shop floor and had witnessed it all. They tackled Karen into the wall, knocking down glass shelves which had been displaying around 30 bags. Karen is a crumpled mess on the floor, appears shocked, stumbles upright and runs away. Unfortunately this pretty much explains why Karens of the world are placated. Who wants to run the risk of physical assault nowadays? Especially in my state, as of the 1st of November we can conceal carry guns without permits. I was a manager at a Little Caesars about 15 years ago. I'd typically work 3 or 4 closing shifts a week, and then one opening shift. Back then, they ran the $5 pizza thing but it was typically only on Wednesdays. Throughout the week, they usually ran two pizzas for dollar sign X specials. This happened on one of those nights. A male Karen placed an order via phone, and then came to pick it up. I believe he ordered something like a two pizza deal, but then wanted bread and sauce when he got there. Well, he didn't have enough money for the bread and sauce. He only brought enough for the pizza. I told him that I'm sorry, and there was nothing I could do. He looked at me and said angrily my kids want that bread. I repeated to him again that there wasn't really much I could do. I couldn't give away food without it being paid for as I would get in trouble. Keep in mind, he was there while there were several other customers in the store. Had he been alone, I might have just handed it over. He threw an absolute crap fit, called me several names and then told me this isn't over and then he left with the pizzas that he paid for. I found out the next day that he talked to the store manager, and he obviously fabricated quite a bit of the story. She called me at home, and reamed me over the phone. Apparently, I belittled the guy for being too poor to afford bread for his kids and I embarrassed him in front of other customers, when in reality, I apologized probably three or four times, and just told him that I would be in trouble if I just start giving stuff away. She decided to write me up for a lack of customer service skills, and ended up comping the guy an order up to $40 to be used whenever he wanted. He came in the very next day when both the store manager and I were working. I was nothing but pleasant to him even then, and I even apologized if there was a misunderstanding. He still acted like a prick while I was taking his order. He threw in a few the customer is always right mentions and the younger generation doesn't know how to treat customers. Whatever, I'm glad the store manager was there that day because I was planning on quitting for being disciplined for doing nothing wrong. I made his pizzas very well, then I tossed them, pan and all several feet across the kitchen onto the oven conveyor, making a slight mess, and told the store manager that I refused to work for a has. Bean hag who treats her employees like garbage. I walked out and told the guy to enjoy his pizza. I worked there for 2 years. I had a 9-5 manufacturing job a few days later at a small family owned company right near home. I had no clue that some companies actually treated their employees like human beings until I worked there. Former fast food worker reporting about a male Karen. He came through the drive through and handed me what I knew to be a fake $100 bill. I knew it was fake. 
but the process was to make sure the deposit box bill feeder didn't accept it. Well of course it didn't because that crap was fake. So he pulls around and comes inside yelling and calling me racist. Dude was black. Because I wouldn't take his fake 100. He called for the manager and I bailed to the back because I wanted to leave the twilight zone. Someone in a comment above said that the male version of a Karen is called a Dave. This was 30 years ago and there was literally no way I could help this woman. She left while yelling that she hoped my dog died. Loss prevention manager at a retail store. So part of my job was to be the no guy. If there was a customer we were not able to help and they started becoming hostile I was the one who went to defuse the situation because if it escalated I was the only one certified to touch a customer if it came down to safety and security issues. On this particular time my Karen was at guest service with her small child in a shopping cart maybe 2 years old or so. Karen was super frustrated with my employee who was trying to tell her that she could not return her DVD she had purchased for multiple reasons. She didn't have a receipt which she could have used in it to return it however the DVD was also opened and the DVD had a scratch as well. I can already hear her screaming as I approach so have an idea of what's going on already and she immediately begins yelling at me about how my employee doesn't know the store policies and she just wants to return the DVD. I explained to her that it's not only store policy but also a copyright law was involved since it was an unwrapped open and apparently used DVD. She said okay well I got home opened it and there was a scratch on it so now what? I told her well in that case within our policy and the law I can of course exchange that for the same item however I would have to open it before she leaves so that no laws are broken and she doesn't try to return it elsewhere. After more screaming and cursing in front of her child she finally says fine I don't want to return it anymore you can just have it. Then she winds up and frisbees the DVD past my head. Here's the best part now she leaves kicking and screaming and about 30 minutes later I get a call to guest service and it's the same lady this time she says she talked to her husband and there was a misunderstanding and she would like her DVD back. Which I sadly had to tell her I'm sorry mom we have already added that to the trash compactor. I may have escalated the situation a bit too as it was only I think a $10 DVD and if I really wanted to I could have done something to help her for only $10 but with the way she was acting there was no way I was doing anything to encourage that behavior. I'm not a manager, but I work as a server part time. About a month ago I had a table consisting of a mother, a father, and their son. Around 10. They seemed like a normal family at first, but the whole experience turned sour very quickly. After I put their order in and got them drinks I had to visit my three other tables that were sat a couple minutes before. I take about 5 minutes introducing myself to a party of 10 and getting their orders and walk over to Karen because she was waving at me. She told me that they needed more water. The cup was still halfway full, but I told her I would bring it as soon as I could. I then go to my other two tables and get their orders. All of a sudden I hear Karen screaming at a boy who works in carry out so I go over and see what's wrong. She was upset because I didn't get her the water immediately and starts screaming at me. I then run back and get her a whole pitcher of water, because she's clearly a thirst ho. She proceeds to scream at me because I didn't get her a son or a fill of Sprite, when they didn't ask and his cup was 3 stroke 4 of the way full. I apologized and went to get the sprite while alerting my manager of the issue. While I was getting another sprite her husband gets up and starts screaming and cursing in my manager's face, about 3 inches from her. They didn't stop yelling and complaining, so my other manager gave them their meal for free and a gift card. Mind you, this was all over water. It took about 3 minutes after I told them I'd get them water for them to start going insane. I ended up apologizing to my other tables for the disturbance, but they were very understanding and apologized on behalf of the psychotic family. I couldn't help but wonder what happens to their son when he doesn't do exactly what they want. Comma my other manager gave them their meal for free and a gift card. This is the part which infuriates me the most. What a spineless idiot. Not a manager, but a kitchen chef in a pizzeria. We occasionally get this lady that orders a pizza then tries to complain about it in order to get it for free. We always deny her and she always with threatens to give us a bad review of Yelp or Beta whoever is unfortunate enough to be on the phone with her. One time, 
She ordered a pizza with gluten free crust and complained that the crust was too doughy, so she demanded it to be free. Gluten free crusts are as crispy as a cracker when they come out of the oven and are almost the same while we make it. Even if someone didn't bake it in the oven beforehand for whatever reason, it's virtually impossible for it to be doughy. For about a week, all of us would tell each other, make sure that it isn't too doughy as a joke when we had to make gluten free pizzas. I saw an account terminated and their address permanently banned from service by a senior VP. The lady called in to try to restart her service, then proceeded to complain and ask for management when she was told she couldn't. I can't even imagine the amount of complaining she had to have done to get to the senior VP level, since even major escalations only get to a level that's like 3 levels below that. I read the notes and looked at the account, and she had 6 plus service calls every month for 3 plus years. This lady apparently called in almost every day to complain and ask for credits due to her service not working. The address was blocked, and the notes basically said, this address will never get service again. If this lady somehow gets service from this company again, everybody involved will be fired. I had an actual Karen as a manager, two-faced, played favorites and had this annoying nervous laugh she would use at the end of everything she said, as if to punctuate the idiocy of her statement, I think. Ha ha, that we should try it this way, ha ha, because it, ha ha, might, ha ha, work better, yes, she talked just like that. Try dealing with Karen when you're a cop, do you know who my husband is you better not touch me, my husband is so and so yeah okay be well tell me who your husband is on your way to jail, Karen is always racist too, don't you have some black people to arrest, I actually obey the law well Karen assaulting your husband is illegal, so my black partner is going to take you jail now. Or Karen the military officer's wife. My husband is a captain. Where's my salute? Not a manager but I have a few. The worst incident happened at a cafe I used to work at. We had a woman with down syndrome that worked 3 days a week. She is very sweet and helpful and one of our family friends. The town I worked in has a huge influx of tourists in the summer so I'm used to all kinds of people. A man and his wife came in and ordered a smoothie and an iced americano. Because I was trained as a barista I'm aware of the difference between an americano and coffee but usually I use the term coffee because I found that a lot of customers didn't know the difference or really care as long as they got their caffeine. So when I read back the order I said coffee instead of americano. He clarified that it was an americano and not a brew coffee. I told him that we only had an espresso machine so it would definitely be an americano. I made his wife's smoothie and handed it to the woman with down syndrome and told her which woman to give it to. A minute or so later she came back with the smoothie. I asked her what was wrong with it because the woman didn't take it. She said she didn't know but the woman refused to take it. I took it out to her and asked what was wrong with it. She said straight up that she didn't feel comfortable with my co-worker taking it out, implying it was because she had special needs. I firmly told her that she was an employee there and was very competent. I then went to make her husband's drink. I made the iced americano and called his name and said iced coffee out of habit. He sat and looked at me so I said sir, your drink is ready, already irritated by his wife. He came up and said to me I ordered an iced americano, not an iced coffee kind of exhausted by the two. I told him that it was indeed an iced americano. He proceeded to explain to me, the trained barista, the difference between a brew coffee and an espresso drink. After I had already clarified previously that we only had espresso, I looked him dead in the eyes and said firmly there are two shots of espresso, water, and ice in this cup. He then replied with a huh and then had the nerve to ask me if my co-worker with special needs had made it. So I told him, not so nicely, that he could take the drink or not and he could also leave my place of work if he would not treat people with respect. My manager only reprimanded me for swearing. I was a house manager, hum, at a big performing arts venue, and I encountered my worst Karen at a Saturday night showing for the Book of Mormon. I still feel rage when I think about it. Karen's problem? Just a young man seated in front of her in his standard size wheelchair, a veteran no less as I later discovered, and his older parents, who were seated next to him in banquet style seats. A bit of background, the banquet seats are what we used when we had mobility requests. We would remove a small, strategically located section of seats to make an empty place for the mobility device, then place the banquet seats for the other ticketed spots. 
The venue used those specific seats precisely because they were the exact same height as the theater seats. Karen didn't care though. Those people were ruining her view and they needed to go. And no, she wouldn't move to a no-show seat. Didn't I know how much money she spent on these tickets? But when I said I wouldn't move the other patrons, who had also bought the expensive tickets, well then how dare I bring up money. That's hardly the point. And on. And on she ranted, gesturing wildly, with her designer person gold ringed fingers. She ranted through the entire 18 minute intermission while I tried to quietly shut her up somehow. It was excruciating. I even had security on standby. The shrill voice that emanated from her white, toothy maw was a weapon in its own right, enough to make a whistle jealous. The worst part though, is she was so extremely rude that the family of the man with the wheelchair decided to leave anyway. I tried so hard to make other arrangements for them, for free, tickets on another day, or to another show, or even just a refund for that night. They were very kind to me, but just wanted to go home. Meanwhile, Karen got to go back in and watch the rest of the show. Man, frick that entitled B Karen. I hope she has to leave halfway through every show she ever goes to for the rest of her miserable and satisfied life. Who oh boy, this brings me back. So, when I was a younger man I was an assistant manager at Blockbuster Video. For you youngums out there, before Netflix you would have to go this place called a video rental store and actually pay money to rent a movie. Once upon a time they even came on these boxy things called VHS tapes. So, one day I'm working an evening shift and the phone rings. This woman I'll call Karen is on the other end. She says she got a call earlier in the day about some videos being overdue. She was absolutely livid, as if we had urinated on her ancestor's grave by letting her know some movies were overdue. I brought up her account on our computer and sure enough, three movies were still out and were due back a week before. She goes ballistic, absolutely screeching at me over the phone that her daughter rented those movies for a sleepover and had returned them. I check the return bin, nothing. I even walk out to the floor and check the copies on the shelf to see if maybe it's them. For those not in the know, every movie had its own code, no dice. Finally, she just screams at me that we're trying to rip her off and she's going to tell her husband who's an attorney and he'll sue us all out of existence. I go about the rest of my shift and lo and behold, about an hour later this woman comes marching in, comes right up to the counter and slams a stack of 3 VHS tapes on the counter before yelling some profanity at the poor clerk. I had witnessed this from the other end where I was checking in returned movies. I looked at the stack of movies and sure enough, they were the ones her daughter had rented and returned. Bonus. The next day I was also working there and this man in a suit comes in. Real friendly guy who asks to speak to management. I walk over to chat with him and he tells me that he's the lawyer and he wants to apologize for his wife's behavior. I crap you not he actually said, we're trying to get her under control. The doctor just prescribed her Xanax. That last part gave me a good chuckle. I'm not a manager but I used to work at a cafe bakery and was there when our manager ripped a Karen a new butthole. One of my co-workers was about 18 and had a really crappy home life. He had cigarette burns and scars on his arms from self-harm. A few of the scars were really noticeable and could have possibly been suicide attempts. I don't know. I never pried about them. So this lady, about 50, comes in and orders with what I presume was her friend. My co-worker takes the orders to them. Overall she was being snippy and demanding with him, but the worst experience part comes when she picks up her pizza and rips it apart, and says to him, this isn't even sliced all the way through, you'd think you'd be able to figure that out by now, I swear my manager almost came unglued, I've never seen veins bulge so far out of someone's head before or since, you could tell he was summoning every ounce of his strength not to choke her outright in the middle of the bakery, Donnie, the manager, immediately kicked both women out and told them they weren't welcome back they asked for the owner when he informed them he was the manager but when the owner finally arrived he concluded that the women were barred they threatened to call the cops but didn't since we gave them their money back i still can't fathom how anyone could be so insensitive holy crap that reminds me of when my dad had these special kitchen knives that were skin resistant and told me even you couldn't cut yourself with these I used to work as a manager at a sandwich shop, 
Our policy for any pickup orders was to not cook their fries until the customer came in so that they have fresh fries. This is always told to the customer on the phone. I had this one bee call in her order and ask me if I could cook the fries immediately so that she didn't have to wait them. I told her I couldn't do that because if she doesn't come in to pick her order up within about 5 minutes, those fries will be soggy and cold. She seemed to understand this. She ends up showing up about 45 minutes after she placed the order and proceeded to yell at me because her fries weren't ready. I explained to her that if I had cooked her fries when she placed the order that they would be very cold and soggy because she took 45 minutes to come pick her order up. She didn't care. She continued to yell at me about how she's a nurse and has no time to wait for the fries. I told her oh well, you either need to wait for them to cook, which takes literally 2 minutes to cook, or leave. She waited. What a bee. I would wait any day for fresh fries versus soggy, cold, sad fries. Honestly, I've only really had one experience so far. I am new to retail and got the job because I ran out of fricks to give. One day, a lady came in the store and went to the Pizza Hut Express. They were out of pan pizzas and closing within a minute of her arriving. She wasn't convinced and came up to me at self-checkout and asked for a manager. I just shouted manager without stopping what I was doing and someone came. She explained that she wasn't convinced that the Pizza Hut was out of pan pizzas. The manager explained that they were. She said she didn't believe her. I casually mentioned that they're closed now anyway, so it doesn't matter. She expresses how much she craves a pan pizza. So a co-worker and I explain that there are at least three pizza places nearby, one of which was a full pizza hut, that were still open and served pan pizzas. She really wanted a Target Pizza Hut Express pan pizza, though, but, she stormed off saying she needed to pick up a prescription. None of us had the heart to tell her that the pharmacy closed two hours ago. My worst Karen was a middle-aged woman who I caught trying to switch price labels around on some blocks of cheese. She found a 5 pound label for a multi-pack of chicken breasts, it said chicken breasts on the label, and tried to pull the plastic strip off the shelf to put the new label in place. When I caught her and asked if she needed any help, pro tip, never outright ask a Karen what they're doing. She pointed at the blocks of cheese which were 6 pounds and said these were 5 pounds the other week. I politely explained that they were not. It was a different brand of cheese and she said well why are they in the sale bit then? They were not. I again explained that the cheese was not 5 pounds and she walked away muttering to herself. I thought that was that and carried on with my tasks when I heard shouting coming from the till and my staff member rang the management bell and I headed over, knowing it was her. It was. She was facing him and yelling that the manager said I could have them for 5 pounds and he was trying to explain that he needed manager authorization so I approached and asked what the problem was and she immediately said you're not the manager I said I was and I had said no such thing about letting her have the cheese for 5 pounds and she then said listen I'm a close personal friend of 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 yeah I'm going to stop you right there I'm the manager and I've never seen you before in my life because at that point she had pee me off. She left the store screeching that she was going to head office about my incompetence followed by our security guard. The next morning there was a round robin email from other branches in the area about a middle aged woman trying to sneak a discount on blocks of cheese. She'd gone to every store in the area just to try to get one pound off some cheese. Years ago I was managing a store in a local pet store chain. I was young and often dismissed as a manager. One night a woman walks up to me holding a normal parakeet cage, about $30, and asks me if she buys the cage can we throw in extra purchase, food, and other accessories. I politely tell her I can't do that but I can get her a discount if she's buying all those items. She instantly flips her crap and starts reading me the riot act, telling me she works retail and she knows I am supposed to do whatever makes the customer happy. This goes on for a short while, never giving me a chance to get a word in. She then sets the cage down and storms out of the store. We all sort of laughed it off. Even a few customers who saw it go down saying things like I don't know how you deal with people like that. About a half an hour later my cashier tells me there is an angry woman on the phone. Obviously the same woman. Wanting to speak to the manager. I pick up the phone and introduce myself. 
she immediately starts telling me about her awful experience with the rude kid I have working for me. She rehashes the entire situation with all sorts of embellishments mixed in. She says that when she approached the rude kid he was throwing ferrets into the ferret pen from 10 feet away saying I was playing ferret basketball. Never happened. She told me that she simply asked if there was a discount for large purchases because she was buying an expensive parrot cage and all the necessary supplies for her expensive parrot and would be spending well over $500. Again, literally not a single part of that was true. But the rude kid told her that cheap people don't get discounts and if she can afford a $500 cage and a $2k parrot she can pay full price. The entire time I just let her rant on, trying not to laugh. So I finally tell her I can give her corporate's number. She says no she just wants me to know what type of people I have working for me and how I, he, should be fired. So I asked who it was and started describing myself. She confirms and I said well mom, you might want to take the number for corporate and tell them because I the rude kids you talked to, none of what you just told me actually happened. And we have 24 hour surveillance cameras in the store and I can pull up the entire ordeal in case my DM would like to see what really happened. She screamed at the top of her lungs frick you punk and slammed down the phone. We didn't actually have cameras but I knew the bluff was enough. It was quite the satisfying moment. I had many you are speaking to him moments in my old career. But that was the best because she was so batshit. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.